going to do this fairly fast. At least I'm going to try to. There is a conversation that has been going on about provider men. Are there a lot of provider men out there uh, for women who want to find them? Um, there's a bit of a debate. Uh, this goes back to a podcast where I looked at, Shira 7. And the roughly 2,000 women who were in her uh, stream looking for provider men. You know, again, she runs sort of a, a gold digger channel, not knocking it. I mean, YouTube is entertainment. Um, but she basically has a gold digger channel and she's talking about provider men and how many of them there are. Here's a follow up she did. I'm assuming that someone from her channel saw some of my content saying that there aren't a lot of provider men, sent that to her and she responded. Let's just take a quick yeah. deal with it. Okay. <laughs> so there is no shortage. That is. is a fear tactic that has been used by, you know, some of these dusties out here that want to make you seem like you are unable to achieve what it is that you are trying to achieve in this world. Okay, that's the comment I want to react to. Essentially, there are a lot of women who follow her who want provider men but they are not looking at certain facts about how few provider men there are. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that Shira 7 is completely wrong, but I am going to say that there are some things you need to consider, and that's what we are going to talk about. One thing you're going to note, I don't just argue points. I argue with numbers. I am not going to sit here and just tell you crazy stuff that I've made up just for the fun of it. So let's take a look at some numbers, shall we? Okay. Oh, let me not do it that way. Let's just do it like this. And I will zoom. Actually, that's big enough. Okay, my source is at the bottom. Um, here's what I want you to understand. How many men are there in America? Roughly 165 million. Uh, you know, a little bit, not quite 350 million people in America. So 165 million men. How many of those men earn $100,000 or more? Roughly 18%. My source listed right there at the bottom. You don't have to believe me. You can go there. You don't have to believe that source. You can look it up yourself. But if you run the numbers, roughly 18% of this number of men earn what we would say the minimum that you would need if you're looking for a provider man. That's 30 million men. Now, this was an interesting fact that I had never actually stopped to consider until I was reading this article, but it essentially said, how many people aren't in substantial debt? The point they're making is, look, you might find people who make six figures, but a lot of them are living hand to mouth just like everybody else. The point they're making in the article is that as you make more money, you start to spend more money. You upgrade your car, you upgrade your house, you upgrade your lifestyle. So you're still living with you know next to no savings because um, you know you just you're just spending more. You're doing the same things that on um, on a higher level, uh, a more luxurious lifestyle, but still all of your money going towards your lifestyle. I didn't realize this, but roughly, you know, two thirds of people um, are in substantial debt. So if we're talking about someone who is the provider male, someone who's got money and has enough of it to spend on someone else, that's going to be the people who have the money and aren't in the debt. Otherwise, all of your money is going towards debt. So that makes sense. Uh, now you're not at 30 million people. You're down to 10.8 million people. Technically, if you're just looking for a man who's a provider, there are 10.8 million providers in America. So you can look at this. And to be honest, the way Shira 7 
argues the case. She tells women to go after this 10.8 million men. Okay. Um, by those numbers, there are a lot of men. You can see I have another tab here, so clearly this is going somewhere. Here's where you have to really pressure test this. You remember Howard Hughes, the playboy, you know, the playboy. Um, old guy, non-monogamous, rich. Um, he would be a provider man. If you want to date an old, non-monogamous guy, uh, then yeah, 10.8 million people out there and available to you. However, that's not what a lot of the women who are going after these men are looking for. And that's the point we want to get to. In addition to him having the money and the ability to spend it on you, you want him to be tall, fit, attractive. Potentially, you want him to not be in a committed relationship. You want a whole lot of things beyond just the money. And we're going to quickly walk through all of those metrics and how they impact this. You want a guy who's six feet tall, 15% of men. That 10.8 just became 1.62 million people. You want him to be handsome? I'm being generous in saying that he's you know, the top third of men on an attractiveness scale. Uh, women seem to want them to be even more attractive than that. But let's say you want him to be handsome. Okay. He, this would be essentially a guy who's a seven. Now you're down to 486,000 men. Here's an age adjustment. Uh, the long story short on this is, let's say you want a guy who's 10 years to 20 years older than you. So you're 30 and you'll date someone who's 30 to 50, 20 year age range. That's 40% of men. What I'm doing here is I'm looking at all men. So guys from 20 to 70 saying this is your eligible pool of people to date. You've got a 50 year gap. Each year is about 2%. Um, if you're curious to get into the math, drop a DM and I can walk you through it in more detail. But fundamentally, you've got to adjust for how old a guy you're willing to date. 20 years up, you've got 40% of men still at your disposal, about 195,000 men. You want them to be fit. I'm just describing fit as being, you know, average or better. So a dad bod or better. If you need him to be muscular, these numbers go down. He needs to, needs to be fit, a little bit less than 100,000. Are you willing to be a home wrecker? If you need him to be unwed, this does not even include not in a relationship, just not married, 45% of the men, you're down to 43,000. Non-smoker, not that many people smoke. Um, I call it 90%. It's a little bit more people smoke. But again, I'm trying to be as forgiving with the numbers in favor of uh, the women who are looking for these guys as possible. You're down to roughly 40,000 men. You get how this works. You want them to be childless. You're down to 15,000 men, 40%. Philosophically aligned. Let's talk about that for a second. What the heck am I talking about there? Here's what this means. You want a man who makes this money and is willing to spend enough of it on you. You want someone who potentially travels the way you do, who views the world the way you do, who views the way relationships would work the way you do. So if you want someone who is monogamous and wants kids or doesn't, you know, whatever your set of wants are, you want this person to share those same wants, those same philosophies on life. I'm being generous in calling it 50%. I really don't think it's that close. If you want a guy who is rich and you're strictly with him for the money and you want him to be monogamous, I think that that's a very tiny set of men. But um, we're going to say half the men that you could find are out there. Last part's mutual attraction. Again, I'm being very generous here. If you're a five, I'm assuming you've got a 50-50 shot at attracting that guy. A five for a woman is average, okay? So if you're a five, this is what you get. But understand that this is what you look like without makeup. I understand that, you know, you doll yourself up, you've got the makeup on, and you call yourself a 10. Here's the problem. All the other women can doll themselves up in makeup and call themselves tens too, so you're not special. 
in that instance. What do you look like when you've been working out and you're sweaty and yucky? Are you still hot or do you look like, you know, do you look like a troll? Let's just call it what it is. However, we're going to say 50% chance that this guy sees you and likes you and has all of these other things going for him. Very generous there. There are things that I have ignored in this. I've ignored race. If you need someone, if you if you want a specific race of man, numbers get reduced. Sexual orientation, didn't touch that at all. Drugs, technically you could roll that into philosophically aligned, but um, I look at that a little bit differently. This is more, you know, drug use. If you're not into people who use drugs or if you're into drugs and need someone who's cool with that, you know, there's drugs is a little bit of a different animal than just kind of you know, your interest in sex and travel. Didn't cover any of those. Now, per state, 50 states, 2% chance of these guys being in any state. Here's what we've got. If you're looking for a provider man and you're looking for him to match other criteria you have beyond just being rich, there may be 80 men in your state who qualify. That's the average. More populous states are gonna have more of those people. Less populous states, less of those people. There are 80 provider men per state, not per city, per state. There are about 400 cities on average per state. Not one of these guys per city who's eligible. There are not a lot of provider men to go around. So if your attitude is, you're just going to sit around and wait for him to show up in your DMs. You're deluding yourself. Think about this like it's a game of musical chairs, okay? There are 10 women and one chair, and that's being kind. Are you just going to sit back and hope that when the music stops, you're in the right spot and you sit down faster than everybody else? Let's dial that up a bit. The person who wins the seat wins a million dollars. Are you just going to leave things to chance? Or are you going to step up and do everything you can to try to be the winner? If your goal is to find the provider guy and your approach is to just sit around and hope that he magically appears the way princes do in fairy tales, Give up now. Go buy yourself a PlayStation. Learn how to play Call of Duty. That's going to be your life. You want this? You better figure out how to start working for it because otherwise it's just not going to happen. Point made. Drop any comments you've got, and I am happy to have that conversation. It's the last good man in Jersey signing out.